Any news on Luke Amos, mate? He obviously pulled up again in the West Brom game. Is he? No, I won't see him to after. Won't see him. Won't risk it now. He'll be back for Burnley. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, it's been must be really frustrating. Kind of, you've lost so many players, sort of, to hamstring, to muscle injuries. Is it just something that's unfortunate, or is it something else? I don't know. Speaking, speaking to Huddersfield and West Brom, and even Norwich the last week or so, the schedule. You know, I, 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 I'm obviously looking in my house, trying to look after our people here, but um, every manager seems to be saying similar. I don't know, you know, if we need to look at it across the board at how many injuries there's been in this period. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a, it's an interesting one, mate. We'll have to, we'll have to look at it. I'm certainly obviously disappointed because we know that um, we've got a strong enough squad if everyone's available. We don't want to start chipping away and losing Luke this week. You know, Jake weren't available for one of them games. Rob's just come back. Leon then has to come off injured. Uh, Chrissy's just coming back. And we, you can see that he's looking for a bit of rhythm. Some players like Field, uh, the two fullbacks, Linden, Ilias, they've gone to the well for me. This is not an effort thing. I can't be disappointed with, an, with um, anyone's effort because I think people are giving everything they can. I just... The, the other night, it didn't go in the goal. We might have been there now and it wouldn't have gone in. But... I'd still much rather be the coach of our team than the opposition. You know, when you're at that stadium, it's QPR that are making the run and it's QPR that are playing. We just need to iron out one or two things we've been a bit naive with. And if we do, there's not a lot else broken. And I suppose I have to look at it like that because the other side of it is, is you, you can help make yourself feel terrible. Okay. You've been in the job, or well, your first job as a manager, four months, four and a half months odd. Um, is it everything you thought it was going to be? Or has it been? Have you enjoyed it? Has it been eye-opening? What, what's what's your what's your take before this uh this big long break you're about to embark on? I've loved it to be honest. I've loved uh, everything about it. I've loved coming into the club. I've loved getting to know the players. I've I've loved the reception from the fans, the honesty from the fans. I've tried to give them the honesty back. Um. Yeah, I've loved it. I feel really comfortable in the role. Let's be honest, you know, it's it's a difficult role because there's there's not a lot of finances and it's financial fair play in the background. There's a lot easier jobs in the championship and in the Premier League where you can go in the market and buy the player that you like and stuff like that. We have to be a lot more creative, but that's the challenge I was looking for. And this is uh, exactly what I like in terms of developing players to improve, developing a style of play and identity. I, I, I've really, really enjoyed it. I've got to be honest, sat here now one game before the break, um, being sat in the playoff positions, I thought would taste a little bit better than what it tastes this morning, if I'm honest, because I think that was where I would like us to have been in and around that uh, at this stage, given and taking, it's my first job, lots of new players coming together and the injury problems we had at the start of the season back in August. But I suppose it's the last four or five days have really soured things a little bit. But I must look at the bigger picture and say that there's not, I look at the other teams in the league and, in, and, and there's there's not, there's more than enough fingers on one hand that other teams I would like and other groups of players I'd like to coach. So I'm delighted to be here at QPR. I think I'm a very fortunate coach. I've got a lot of good players and I've got a board and people around me that support me. And we're in a really, really positive place. So it's only you, Doom and Munger, um, journos that can write anything wrong about where we are at the moment. So just, you know, make sure that you're writing in perspective, just how I'm talking in perspective and we'll be all, all be fine, Ian. Okay, I think, I mean, on whatever day it was, Tuesday, Wednesday, it was probably the, the, the most disappointed I've seen you probably since maybe the Blackpool game. And after that, you went on a, a really good run. You beat Watford and uh, had some other good results. Does that give you sort of um, confidence or kind of, uh, you know, the players can sort of lift themselves again for, the, for this you know, this Yeah, it's, 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 listen, it's a crazy league. All I can do is think about us. Look, we should have won that game the other night. We didn't deserve to win it because we spoke all week about the where we felt they would cause us problems. And it was one very clear thing, set plays, with a bit of a caution around counter-attacking. The rest of the game, we knew we'd have the ball. We knew we had to create chances. We knew we wanted to play a bit more whip with Albert just to change things up a little bit. 
And we, we had everything. The game went how we said it would go. And that's why it's the most frustrating thing in the world, because the game of football can be unpredictable. But actually, that game was quite predict predictable. We'd spoke about it. And when we're not, when we're sloppy at one end in our own box, we still had the chances to go and win the game or get points from the game. So I was disappointed. It's the flattest I've felt, to be honest, since then. And we went on a great run. But, I, you know, then I turn on the TV and I don't know what, you know, what would Sheffield United be feeling like after losing to home to Rotherham after beating Burnley? It just seems like the league, but I don't really want to talk about anyone else. And so I've just mentioned the leagues all over the place, but I don't really want to mention it because all I'm worried about is 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 us. If I'd have got the results in a different way, if we'd have flipped this last four games around with the four games previous, because we've won five in what, nine or five in ten, then I'd be delighted to be going into Saturday in the position we're in. But obviously it feels a little bit different now because we did so well a few, couple of weeks back. But I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's everything that I need it to be as well. You know, just like a, a young player, as a young manager, I need the highs and the lows. I need to see how I come out of it. I need to see how I react to things that go on in the dressing room and injuries and losses of form and, and then big wins. But what we have shown is we can go away to Norwich, Sheffield United and Watford and bit seven points. So that's what we have shown, seven points. But we've also shown at home against Rotherham, Huddersfield and Blackpool, we got one point. So we've got to decide what team we're going to be. That's what we've got to decide. As, because, you know, it's hard to change things that are... Uh, they, they, they're old habits and they seem to be creeping back. So last season... Different coaching staff, slightly different squad, but the nucleus of the squad didn't take many points against Peterborough or Barnsley and ended the season letting in a lot of goals from set play. So that's disappointing because I thought we were moving forward um, and we tried to move on from some of the things that um, were our Achilles heel last season as a group. And as I say, it's about the players. I'm trying to empower them to improve them areas. So it's important now. Uh, we play this game, we talk about them things, we work on them and you see a stronger QPR as the season goes on because that's be, that should be what happens. Your team should peak as the season goes on. It shouldn't it shouldn't fall away and, and, and that's what I'm hoping. And uh, just one on, on Ilias, he's obviously been named in the Morocco squad today uh, and I'm, everything didn't come off for him on, against Huddersfield but one thing you can't accuse him of is sort of going high, you know, not trying to make things happen and you know, it, it, I guess it's great credit to him that he hasn't sort of put the handbrake on because the World Cup's coming up. I mean, how how proud of you of him that, you know, he's going to be going to the World Cup? I'm delighted for him because they changed coach recently. So I think he was a little bit nervous because obviously he'd built the relationship and had his caps under the other coach. So I'm absolutely delighted for him and Senny. I think what a wonderful thing for the young players. What a wonderful thing for QPR as well to have players go. And, and while we're talking about that, I'm absolutely devastated for Tyler as well missing out because he would have gone if he would have been fit but he's just he needs a couple more weeks unfortunately um in terms of Illy there's no one that cares more for QPR than Ilias Chair in the player squad there's people that, that care as much as him but there's no one that cares more he gives me everything every single day he plays every minute of every game he runs himself into the floor he's extremely brave so bravery is seen in a number of ways in the football pitch is seen in the way that Jimmy will put his body in the line how Sam Field will go and tackle and Lyndon will compete for headers but it's also seen that when we're struggling that the same people keep going and getting the ball and trying to make the right things happen. And he's a leader in that sense, in terms of showing bravery. He did some excellent things the other night, and he did some things where his decision-making could be better. But let's not forget, if his decision-making was better, there's some of the things he does. If his decision-making, his last pass was perfect, I'm not sure he'd be playing for QPR. So ultimately, that's my aim with Ilias, to keep working him so that he can go and play at that level, because he's... Uh, uh, Again, he's someone I didn't know three or four months ago, but I'm so glad I know today. Okay, and just one last one from me. Uh, Taylor came on, looked really good. Could have had a hat-trick, as you alluded to, after the game. Is he, I'm not going to ask you to name the team, but he must be nudging towards the start. 
Yeah, he's nudging. He's nudging. You have to remember that game was played within 30 yards by 70. So the width of the pitch by 30 yards. It wasn't played in any bigger space than that. So he didn't have to run. He didn't have to tackle. The ball came to him. But what you saw is he loves to shoot. He's got a lovely left foot. He loves to run in the box. You know, it wasn't just what a fantastic pass that was for Tim on his left foot. You know, like I haven't seen his left foot. And all of a sudden he gets it out for that cross where, you know, the dive in Edder and the keeper makes a save. And yeah, look, I know I've got no doubts about Taylor. He's, he, again, you know, as I've said it quite a few times today, it's about football's about players. And so Taylor can achieve what Taylor wants to achieve, but it will be about Taylor. We'll all be around him, give him the right support network, try to help him get fit, try to help him maintain higher standards to to set himself aims and keep ticking them off. But yeah, Taylor's an excellent player and uh, I'm glad he had a chance to show that to the fans at Loftus Road as well. Now, look, it could have been glorious, couldn't it? He could have come away scoring a couple and, and, and turning the game around and I would have been even more happy. But I'm still happy that he was able to show the fans something to be super optimistic about. He's a very, very good player. I just finally... Uh, but he needs to start playing though, doesn't he, really? I mean, he's had a lot of injuries when he was on loan at Birmingham last year and sort of loan has been a bit stop-start. Is it sort of, you know, himself, yeah, feel... he's actually got to get himself fit? Yeah, and that's why he's ended up here. Otherwise, he'd still be maybe at Brighton and around their first team, you know, and that's why he's here. That's why he's going to be our player. You know, we we do get the, the broken childs, if you like. We get the ones where everything's not been plain sailing in the past and we have to piece it together. We're lucky here with the expertise we've got on the staff that that's what we've done for a number of years. So we'll we'll do right by Taylor. And if we do and he follows, then he'll be fit and available to play in the second half of the season. It'll be a signing that we couldn't afford to make, if that makes sense. He's um, There's a couple of games, two or three games he'll play in during the break. Uh, while other people are going away and, and, and getting a bit of rest who have played the majority of the minutes. Others like him will stay back and play in a couple of B team games. And then we've got a couple of bits arranged behind closed doors. So I'm hoping that November is a really big month for Taylor and that sets him up for the rest of the season. Um, yeah, with 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 Tyler, it's not gone completely to plan, but we've been a better team when he has played. Uh, when we've played with three forwards rotating and the interplay early in the season, it seemed like it was musical chairs with him and Chris, who was going to be fit week to week in, week out. That's been really unstable in for me, the coaches and, and the team. Because when all three have played, like Sheffield United away or Bristol City away or Millwall away, we've been a better team. Um, so let's see there's a lot of football between December the 11th when we start against Burnley and the 1st of January uh, um, I spoke to Tyler last night and um, obviously he, he needs to support everyone around him he's just lost out on the dream so I don't want to be sat here talking about something like that today at the moment it's all all guns firing he's away getting himself ready for Burnley on, the, on December the 11th and we can't wait to have him back in the camp mate because we're a better team with him for sure I just knew that game would be played in a very small area of the pitch. So I'm preempting what the game would look like in the last 20 minutes. And it's fair to say that Sinclair needs a bit of room to run. He needs a little bit of room to, to go and uh, exploit spaces. And it wouldn't be his ideal game, you know, when there's no space. So just went with somebody different, but he's fit. He trained well today um, and he's available for the weekend if selected. We are a development club in terms of sustainability. When you're a championship club about parachute payments is the golden ticket to the Premier League, which is very hard when you don't have parachute payments to build a squad to guarantee you that. Yes, why everyone's in the rat race to get in the playoffs. Or the other way to make the club sustainable is to sell someone every summer for double figures. And we're no different to any other club being in that, especially with financial fair play in the background. Uh, I'm trying to start a conveyor belt with everybody else by streamlining the the older age groups in the academy and aligning them very much with the work and giving young players huge opportunities to come and train with us on a daily basis. And also by identifying players like Kenneth Powell on a free, uh, Jake Clark Sorter on a free, uh, Taylor Richards on a very small fee to come in and create a conveyor belt I think if you look at the seven players we signed in the summer, regardless of age, and you look at the athleticism and the technical level they have, you can, it's, it's quite it's quite easy to see what type of players that I want to work with. 
And, and that was just one window very much thrown together because, you know, we were, you know, time constraints. I wasn't in the job. To, to, to build a squad in your own identity probably takes three or four windows. Not every manager gets that. Hopefully I'll have that time here so that you can see at the end what I really wanted it to be like. You have to make a lot of good decisions. You have to have a lot of time on the training pitch. And you have to have a few things go your way. But certainly our club need to develop players onwards and upwards. But it's a collective, you know. So things like the last couple of games... Um, they, we let all of us down. If we'd have won them two games and been six points better off, where would we be sat now? How would we be talking now? And in that, then does Ilias and Senny and Chris look look even more valuable or whoever we're talking about? I think the biggest thing with young players today is they have to be robust. They have to knock games out because you build your squad with a budget. And if people can't play 70, 80, 90% of the games, then they're not going to move anywhere. So it's important that players are fit and available and robust because no manager wants anyone that's, that can't be available. You can't build around players that are not available. So again, some things can't be helped, but other things can. You know, how you live your life and how good you are as a professional is important. So when we're recruiting, we have to make good decisions around that as well. Um, there's often a reason why a player might drop out of a Premier League club on a free into a uh, championship club. Um, and so when you get them in the building, it's working out why that's the case and how quickly you can get them, you know, you can iron them things out because there's a lot of talent, talented players in the country at the minute. I think there's been a lot of good work gone on in, in the academies and we have a lot of talented players. So when I, each time I go to the market, there's a lot of mistakes you can make and there's a lot of rough diamonds you can find as well.